Toss aside the touchy-feely notions of love in business and recognize the real power it holds. Welcome to the Love is Just Damn Good Business podcast with host Steve Farber, drawing on his work with a wide variety of companies from the Fortune 100 to smaller family-owned businesses. Farber shares inspiring interviews with business leaders and proven strategies for how you can create experiences that your customers will love by developing a culture that your employees, teammates, and colleagues love working in. Discover why and how love at the end of the day is just damn good business for you too. Here's your host, Steve Farber. Hi, this is Steve Farber and welcome to another episode of the Love is Just Damn Good Business podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Extreme Leadership Institute and it's not a coincidence because I also happen to be the founder and CEO of that fine institution. And I invite you to come and visit us at extremeleadership.com to check out what we do. We help organizations to operationalize love, energy, audacity, and proof in the way they do business. And of course, this podcast is dedicated to the conversation of just what the hell does love and business mean anyway? And we look at it from a lot of different perspectives. And toward that end, my guest today is the legendary Sherry Tree. Uh, Sherry, I'm gonna, I've got, got her bio. This is what you hear. Uh, now, Sherry and I have, uh, we've spent a good amount of time talking. We're, we're new friends. We're just getting to know each other. Uh, so I wanna read you some of, the, uh, some of the highlights from Sherry's bio. And then we're going to dive right into our conversation. So Sherry, among other things, is a best-selling author. She's a keynote speaker, and she is world-renowned as an entrepreneur. She's the founder and chairman of Codebreaker Technologies with clients in more than 100 countries around the world. And she is a creator, the creator, of the revolutionary bank, B-A-N-K, methodology, and Codebreaker's personality coding technology. So she's the author of this book, why they buy. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it. There it is. Uh, fantastic book. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into the, the mechanics of why people buy. And this is what she refers to as uh, biology, spelled B-U-Y-ology. Uh, she has spoken to hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs. And I know, you know, a lot of speakers and authors are prone to hyperbole. But in this case, she has literally spoken to hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs around the world. And by the way, you know, literally is a word that I use literally. Uh, she has uh, spoken at some of the top business conferences. She's been invited to speak at Harvard, uh, University of California, Google, the United Nations. She's been featured in numerous international publications such as Forbes.com, entrepreneur.com, and she's even been nominated as the Innovator of the Year and Entrepreneur of the Year because of the breakthroughs created from her personality coding technology, including Codebreaker AI. And we live in a time where AI, artificial intelligence, is uh, everybody's favorite buzzword, but they have the world's first artificial intelligence powered by her bank technology, which we're gonna learn about today. Now, here's, here's the reason that, that Sherry and I have connected in the way that we have. On the one hand, you could look at Sherry, and you'll correct me on this if I'm, if I'm wrong, right? But you can look at Sherry as, as a, a very high level, renowned, quote unquote, sales methodology person. If you dig a little bit deeper, what you find is that she is, yes, a salesperson and you know, therefore profit-driven, uh, but she's also very much purpose-driven. And she has a goal to create income, influence, and impact for, wait for this word, all, as in everybody, which is, in, in my language, an audacious vision. And her mission is to crack the code. Now, tell me if this sounds audacious enough to you. Her mission is to crack the code of every human on the planet and ultimately make our world a better place by creating one world and one language. 
and she's passionate about this. She's passionate about life and helping others to take it to the bank so they can take it to the beach. That's right. <laughs> as soon as that beach is open once again, <laughs> That's we right. can take it there. So Sherry, thank you for being here. It's a real pleasure to have you on the podcast. You know, Steve, it's an honor, and I'm just so excited for what's about to unfold as we jam back and forth together. So thank you. Thank you. So tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about your story, because it is an unusual one. So starting, you know, present, present day, here you are, you've got this great company, uh, you have incredible clients, you're teaching salespeople all around the world of this bank methodology, uh, but where did it begin for you? Yeah, well, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad 20 years ago and got so excited to be an entrepreneur that I jumped in with both feet and uh, got involved with a financial planning company working on full commission. In my first year, I crushed it. I made 700 bucks. Wow. <laughs> like total income for the year. I was basically the worst on the whole team. And the only reason they didn't fire me was because I didn't quit. Right. And so for five years, like my story is that I was really trying to figure out how to get good, how to win the game in sales and business, how to get my income up to a seven fi or a six figure income. <laughs> and um, I really struggled. You know, I read a lot of books. I listened to a, a lot of audio programs. I hired coaches and mentors and I did have improvement. I took my income from 700 to 72,000. But the irony was that I was still totally broke. I was $30,000 in credit card debt. I'm renting an apartment, don't qualify for a home. Uh, I'm driving a BMW so that I can fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what year was this? Uh, late 1990s, early 2000s. Okay. Yep. And uh, my BMW was a salvage title one. You know, it was, it was so terrible that the battery would die spontaneously in random locations. I not only needed my own set of jumper cables, but I needed my own battery pack because sometimes I'd get stranded where there was no one to give me a jump. I had to jump myself. <laughs> so, and it reminded me of this quote from Robert Kiyosaki where he says, stop taking advice from people more messed up than you. <laughs> well, that rules a lot oh of gosh. people out for a lot I'm of I'm a us. financial advisor that's totally broke. And I, I'll never forget, Steve, this is hilarious. I, I was meeting with a husband-wife couple trying to tell them where they should invest their, uh, their future savings and their 401k and all of that. And I remember them looking at me saying, well, Sherry, where do you put your money? And my eyes got real big and I thought to myself, what money? Like, I don't have any money. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to help you with your money. Oh gosh. And so <laughs> it just felt hypocritical and that didn't feel good to me. So I, I realized something was broken in what I was doing. And to be honest, I wasn't sure that whether it was me that was broken or maybe it was the system or the advice that I was getting. So this, my journey of bank happened when I realized that sales is not a numbers game. That's what was being crammed into my head. You know, sales is a numbers game. And they kept brainwashing me into believing that in order to get more yeses, you have to get more no's. And finally, one day I woke up and said, you know, that's actually one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Because the truth is, in order to get more yeses, you actually have to get more yeses, not more no's. <laughs> like, I don't want to go for no, I want to go for yes. Like, okay, so let me, I'm gonna hit, let, me just, let me just hit pause for a second there, because this is, you just turned on, on its head the, probably one of the most pervasive notions about what it takes to be a a successful salesperson, that it's a numbers game and every no leads you closer to a yes. Yep. And you're saying, mm -mm. I'm saying that's not true. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm willing to be controversial and disruptive a little bit. Um, and the idea is that sales is not a numbers game. Sales is a people game. And this is where I'm really in love with what you're doing. And love is just damn good business. Because the truth is, if you're good with people and you genuinely love them, and you serve them and you do what's best for them, you'll crush it in sales. And so the bank system is what allowed me to have authentic connections and communication with people, showing respect, showing love. Um, and it, it, in one year, it took my income from 72,000 to a half a million. I had a 7x increase in revenue. And the best part for me was that I went from working 60 to 80 hours a week grinding and hustling as if that was a badge that we're supposed to wear as an entrepreneur, you know, that I'm working myself to death and, and instead worked, dropped it down to 20 to 30 at seven X the income. 
And I'm like, well, this is awesome. You know, they talk about work smarter, not harder, but no one's teaching how to do that. And the bank system did that for me. Um, within three years, my income was over a million, you know, by 33 years old, I was earning over a million dollars a year and no one could believe it. And I'm like, this is awesome. And so could what you, happened was you people it? started asking me, how are you doing that? And one thing led to another. I, I became very passionate about teaching it to other people who genuinely wanted to learn the system and how to, how to interact better with their clients and customers. And, and one thing led to another. So you, you started making a million dollars a year. You said nobody could believe it. Could you believe it at first? You know, the year I went from 72 to a half a million, it honestly felt like I was cheating. Like I definitely cracked the code and I was trying to figure out, is this ethical? Like by, by me understanding people to this level authentically and how to communicate to them, getting a yes, it, it, what it felt like was I could pick any lock there was. Give me a lock, I could crack it. You know, like if you watch the Italian job, you know, and they're, they got the little stethoscope leaned up to the safe and they're turning the little dials. I got that good with people. And in getting that good with people, and, and what's important is that sales is not based on manipulation or fraud or trying to like hurt or harm somebody by selling them something that they don't need or don't want. It's about the highest level of respect. How can you communicate in a way that they're designed to be communicated with as a human being? And, and this is where love comes in, that if I genuinely love you and I genuinely respect you, then I will honor you by communicating to you in a way that serves you. And the bank system taught me how to do that as if I was speaking foreign languages differently with each client in a way that literally yielded the yes almost every single time. And I thought, this is awesome. Like, so, if this keeps <laughs> working, this is really cool. So, so to... um. To, to build on that, on that metaphor of language a little bit, because uh, in some ways it's a metaphor, some ways it's not, but it's like saying, if I'm, if I'm in Paris and I'm speaking French, am I manipulating the French people because I'm speaking their language? No, I'm connecting with them more deeply because I care enough to have learned their language and I'm showing that in the way that I communicate with them, right? Exactly. So in the same way, bank is, is, a, is a method, is the way I understand it, it's a method for understanding different personality types so that because I love them, I can learn how to communicate in a way that they're most likely to understand. And then they're still gonna make their decision as to whether or not my product or service is right for them, but they're not gonna dismiss it simply because we're not connecting. That's exactly right. That's exactly the basis of bank. So you, you had the success for yourself and then naturally people, you know, started knocking on your door and saying, how the, how the, how the hell do you do that? So did you start teaching this because people were asking you to teach it or was there something else? Was there something, was there something else motivating you? No, this is exactly why I wasn't, I mean, I didn't build this product to go sell it. I didn't, you know, it wasn't like I was some MBA student and they're like, think of a company or build a product and, you know, go bring it to market. Like the exact opposite happened, which is really the, the, the awesome part of being an entrepreneur. You accidentally invent something to solve your own problem. And the next thing you know is it solves everyone else's problem too. Um, and so people kept asking me, I mean, I had people, Steve, that were willing to fly me around and buy me plane tickets. I remember a guy flew me up to go train his sales team on this system. I didn't charge for it. I, I, I did all this stuff for free. And he, he picked me up from the airport and he took me to Nordstrom's and he had a custom suit made for me. And I'm like, why are you doing that? And he goes, because you're coming and training my people. And I'm wow. like, awesome. Like, I got a, I got a brand new suit, totally tailored made. And I remember thinking like, this is amazing. And, and people just kept begging and begging and begging for me to teach it to them. And so I started putting together little workshops and seeing if people would come and they started buying plane tickets and flying from all over the place to come learn. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. So when I left the, the career that I was in where I built it and was using it as their top salesperson, I ended up resigning and leaving and saying, 
um, you know, I've got something that can help a lot more people than where I'm at. And so that's when I kind of cut my own path and said, I'm going to go build my own company and see, see what we can make of it. You know, just an editorial comment here. I've been, I've been doing my work in leadership development for 30 years. And I can, I can honestly say that whereas I have received a few t-shirts over the years, I don't believe anybody's ever bought me clothes. <laughs> that's what I thought. So, I'm like, that's, that's, that was a first. That's a whole, a whole new level. So, so you started, you started um, your company uh, when? Well, it, you know what? It's been a process. Um, so I, it started off with this bank thing, late 1990s, early 2000s as a work in progress. Like literally when I built the system for how to code someone's personality, and you can see these cards if you're looking at the video version of this, uh, the original versions of these were just white three by five cards that I would hand to my client. And bank is the acronym that represents the four types of of personalities, but rather than based in psychology, like maybe the DISC or MBTI or the color code or some of those other ones, I reverse engineered it and I made it based in what I call biology, spelled B-U-Y-ology, right? The science of buying behavior. And you mentioned that. So I was trying to figure out what their bank code was and what triggers the yes and what helps me avoid the no. All right, so the B in bank is blueprint. This is going to be someone that's very conservative, kind of inside the box. They make decisions for totally different reasons than the A in bank, which is red for action, mover, shaker, millionaire, maker, totally outside the box. And you can see just the polarity of the B and the A. They're so different one from another. Um, and and if, if we apply this in business, these differences can create explosive relationships in the workplace where leadership comes in. If we apply this in life, a lot of times you hear opposites attract mm. and opposites attack. And these, these types of people marry all the time because they think Jerry Maguire style, like you complete me because you bring something to the party that I don't have. And as romantic as that sounds, the truth is you're marrying someone who speaks a different language in their authentic state. It's like a PC marrying an Apple computer. There's just going to be a disconnect throughout the entire relationship. And you're going to be forced to speak that other person's code all the time. And that just creates dysfunction a lot of times, right? And people are not emotionally intelligent enough to overcome those differences, right? And I could go down that rabbit hole. The N in bank stands for nurturing. This is the person who cares more about people than profits. And they're, the, the types of businesses they're running are nonprofits uh, versus for profits but they care about making an impact in the world. They do care about love and they do believe that love is damn good business. Um, and the K in bank stands for knowledge. This is the person that would re uh, the engineer the box, right? They're very smart, analytical, science data driven. I use the color green, like Microsoft Excel's logo or the matrix, the computer code that falls across the screen is green. So the idea behind it was that you know, these people are different. So I built uh, a set of cards back in the day that were just little three by five cards. Cause what I, what I found out was that every human was not just one of the four, but they're actually a combination of all four. And that's what creates their bank code. Think of it like a pen code, right? So if you take your ATM card and go put it into the ATM, the ATM is going to ask you for a four digit pen code. If you want money to come out. Well, your client is the same way, except they have a four digit pen, uh, bank code. Hmm. And if you communicate to them in the wrong sequence, no money's going to come out. No yes is going to come out. No relationship is going to happen. And that's what most people are playing. The, the numbers game is the shotgun approach of, you know, there's 24 different bank codes and the odds of you communicating to someone in their exact bank code is one in 24, which, which is roughly a 4% chance. Right. And that's why they call it the numbers game versus a people game. What if I could actually know their bank code prior to engaging the conversation about my products and services or, or life, whatever it could be my brother-in-law. And if I know their bank code first, then could I communicate effectively? So I built those cards and then those cards led to those results. And then that led to me hosting some workshops. I didn't even have workbooks or PowerPoints or anything back in the day. I just trained the philosophy of it. 
Um, and then, and then the time came where someone asked me for audio CDs and that was back when those were cooler than cassette tapes. If you remember right. those days, yeah. I even remember cassette tapes. Yeah. I used to listen to cassette tapes. Like how many times have you listened to cassette tapes and then the little springs coming out of it and you're like, ah, oh, I just ruined it. And <laughs> yeah. So I recorded audio CDs and, and then audio CDs turned into the evolution of where we are today. Right. All well, I mean, there's, there's quite a big jump from audio CDs to artificial intelligence driven online stuff. I mean, you guys have some very, some very cutting edge, really cool looking stuff. And the, the beauty of your system is its simplicity, right? I mean, being, being in, in the leadership development uh, arena that I've been in, you know, we've used a lot of tools over the years. Um, assessment tools of, of various kinds in uh, in the leadership arena. The leadership practices inventory is one that's you know really part of my history. Jim Kuzis and Barry Posner's uh, incredibly simple and powerful you know 360 assessment. And then of course there's the more universal stuff like Myers Briggs, as you mentioned, and DISC. So. To do a disk profile, which I've I've just done again recently, uh, for myself and and with with folks on my team, is it's a pretty it's a pretty um, you know in, involved assessment. Whereas bank is a deck of four cards, and and is much much more simple to use. So talk a little bit about about the distinction between bank and some of these other methods and how can a person start to use your approach uh, yeah. right away? Well, I, I love it. And you know, there's a lot of great systems that are out there and, and they were invented for different reasons. Bank was the first one that was invented specifically for salespeople, by salespeople, so to speak, people in business, entrepreneurs, et cetera. Um, and I love the quote from Einstein. He said, any fool can complicate things. It takes a genius to simplify it. Yeah. I was not looking for more complicated. Complexity shuts down sales, right? I was looking for simple. Like, look, at the end of the day, I just wanted to hit the easy button and figure out how do I get the yes from this customer? What, what triggers the yes? What tripwires the no? So when I realized that it broke down to a set of these different values and the bank system is based on values instead of psychological profiles, because someone came up to me and said, how many psychology classes did you take in college? And I said, none. That's why this works. <laughs> 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 like if I'd gone deep in psychology, I would have just joined everything else that was already out there. And again, it's not that any of them are bad. They're just complex. Like some of them can take 45 minutes or 60 minutes just to complete an assessment Whereas this four card approach of bank was done in less than 90 seconds. And, and I didn't even know if it would work, Steve. So when I created it, I, I created these sets of values based on what I was learning and I'd hand them to my customer and I'd say, Hey, Steve, do me a favor before we get started, take a look at these four cards. And literally I'd hand them to you like this and your hand would come grab them every single time. Like no one ever not took them. Curiosity gets the best of you. The topic on the cards is about you, not me, right? Your favorite subject. And then I actually spoke to them in the four personality types when I asked you to do it. So when I hand you the cards and I say, take a look at these cards, I'm talking to the knowledge part of you that's siphoning in information. I then give you instructions. I say, sort these cards from top to bottom, most like you to least like you. So I'm talking to your inner blueprint who wants the rules, the instructions. I then said, this is going to help me serve you better. So I'm talking to the nurturing part of you that wants a relationship connection with me. And I end it with, and save us both some time. I'm talking to the action. That's like, hurry up, chop, chop, get to the right. bottom line. So let, let me, let me just uh, interject here because um, the, the distinction, there's a couple of distinctions that you made that I think are really important. I just want to shine the light on it a bit. It's not a psychological profile. It's a values profile. And, and it's done in a way where a person can quickly look at a set of written values on, on these cards and ask themselves, which, which of these apply most to me? And then prioritize them, right? So for people who are, who are just hearing this for the first time, I just want to take a second and read the values 
Is that all right? Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> so blueprint, the blueprint profile, the values are stability, structure, systems, planning, processes, predictability, responsibility, duty, rules, credentials, titles, tradition. Okay. So as you're listening to these, uh, just ask yourself if the, if the kind of rings your bells, right? That's what we're doing. Uh, the action profile, the values are freedom, flexibility, spontaneity, action, opportunity, excitement, attention, stimulation, competition, winning, fun, and image. The nurturing profile, the values are relationships, authenticity, personal growth, significance, teamwork, involvement, community, charity, ethics, harmony, morality, contribution. And finally, knowledge is learning, intelligence, logic, self-mastery, technology, research and development, science, universal truths, expertise, competence, accuracy, and the big picture. So the kind of magic sentence that you just said when you, get, when you hand somebody these cards contains all of these profiles in it. So I'm going to be more willing to do the card sort to begin with. So yeah. I remember when somebody first handed these to me, one of your, uh, one of your certified uh, trainers in this, uh, our, our friend Trina, who, uh, uh, where I first heard about you from, uh, she handed me these cards and I sorted them out. And for me, uh, looking at these, um, the one that would just rose to the top for me was action, freedom, flexibility, spontaneity, attention, stimulation, opportunity, excitement. Those were the ones on the list that jumped out at me. The second one for me uh, was nurturing. So these are things like, again, relationships, authenticity, personal growth, significance, teamwork, involvement. That, that took number two in my particular deck. Uh, the third one uh, was knowledge, learning, intelligence, logic, self-mastery, et cetera. And then the last one, <laughs> stability, responsibility, duty, structure, systems, planning, and all of that. Like I'll outsource that. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so th it's not that, that, that I, I, I've, I'm throwing away some of these. It's whatever, whichever kind of set of values most, most makes me say, yeah, that's me. Very simple. Very simple. Did I get it right? Well, that's the thing is there's no wrong answer. It's, it's your preference. And, and this is the whole point of bank is that salespeople, people in general make assumptions. They communicate in their authentic bank code, like their authentic language. You communicate in English versus taking the, into consideration what is the bank code of the person you're talking to as if you were in Paris speaking French, right? And so it's the highest level of respect that you can show someone is by understanding what is your bank code? Like what's your operating system? Are you PC or are you Mac? Two totally different paradigms. What language do you speak? Or in our case, what code do you speak? Hmm. And so the cards were just a really quick way for us to, to do the assessment. And then that, that evolved, right? The technology evolved because, and, and once we came out with these cards, like I'll never forget, Steve, we were doing workshops. We call them code breaker summits. People come for a couple of days. They learn how to crack codes. They, it's kind of like if you've ever done speed dating or speed networking, we'll partner you up across from someone you've never met before. You have three minutes to crack their code. Ask them whatever questions you want, like playing the game 20 questions. At the end, you got to lay down your cards or sometimes we have poker chips and you lay them down in the sequence that I think you are, right? It's like the game Mastermind. Right. <laughs> It's so fun and it's a two day workshop. It's totally experiential. Um, and, and we released these cards, we made them in plastic. And when we rolled them out, I mean, it was like we were walking on water when we gave a pocket wallet size version of these cards, like credit card style, the audience just went nuts. And then what started happening is people would hold them up like uh, on Skype back before Zoom was popular, there was Skype. And let's say you and I were talking on Skype and they'd literally hold it up to the camera and they'd say, okay, Steve, tell me when you're done reading these ones. Huh. And then they'd be like, tell me when you're done reading these ones, trying to crack the code virtually. And I'm like, why don't we build a technology that allows you to drag and drop these four cards on a website? And that gave birth to our digital version of the code crack, which is called bank pass. And then as evolution took us more into the future, we developed, uh, and work together uh, on developing artificial intelligence based on bank. 
And uh, now we can literally take any type of copy, website, email, social media post. I can even go to your LinkedIn profile. We're just making the announcement this week, the first week of, of July here. Um, on the Google Chrome extension where I can be on LinkedIn, I can look at your profile, I can click one button and our AI will reveal your bank code and then it will guide me on exactly how to communicate, negotiate and close the sale based on your code. Get even out of if town. we've never met before. Oh my gosh. So that's the future, that's where we're going. Now I also noticed, you know, if that's the AI version of this, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but then there's also the, um, uh, the tactile version of it. I noticed, I just sorted the cards out for myself, live and in person. And then because you know, we're looking at each other on Zoom, I saw that you were holding your deck. You had reshuffled your deck according to what I just said I was. So, so what's great is when our clients learn this and they understand the bank code of their prospect, their client, whoever they're talking to, you know, they can literally lay these out on their desk. And we, we of course have guides that we would give them. Like some people will print them, put them up on their wall where we give them the top tips of how they're communicating to them. What are their behaviors? What are the sales tips? What's going to trigger the yes? What do they need to avoid to stay away from the no guiding them? Right. Um, because if I understand your bank code, which is action first, like, you know, Steve, you're like freaking phenomenal. And you know, that I understand what makes you tick, what turns you on, et cetera. And then the, this is the love part of you. That's like, look, I'm going to be number one in the marketplace. And I, and I, I can show you that, that I will be. And, and the reason I'm number one is because I actually care about people. And I'm going to serve people in leadership capacities, extreme leadership, because I genuinely care. And because I can't stand any of the dysfunction. And by the so way, that's I'm going action. To do that's action and then nurture. Okay. Yep. That, that's the action first and then the nurturing. Right. And then when you follow follow it up by the reason that you can go accomplish this is because you're going to be able to prove it scientifically with the data. Right. So you're going to do the research and you're not just writing a book willy nilly. You can back it with all of the data, the case studies, et cetera, uh, from it. You do want to be an expert and you don't want to be played a fool. So that's the knowledge. Okay. That's the knowledge okay. piece. And then the last piece blueprint where the, the rules, the structure, the regulations go out the window. Like you're willing to be controversial where this person might be way conservative and say, Steve, you can't say damn. You know what I mean? You can't put a swear word on your book. You're gonna be like, yes, I can, watch me, right? <laughs> so the, the action card is gonna be like, I can do whatever I want. And this one's the rule breaker or the rule follower type is just gonna get mostly right. dismissed. So I did notice, and for, for people that are, that are watching this episode on Zoom, they'll see on your, um, your name, it says Sherry Tree, A-N-K-B. Exactly. So I reveal my bank code on every Zoom session, and we happen to be a matching bank code, which is we only do. a 4% chance. Oh, is that right? Yeah. There's 24 different codes, and we happen to have the exact same code. Interesting. So what we're, we're analyzing all of the bank codes. This is where it gets fascinating. Like the older our company gets with data, technology, et cetera. We're, we're studying the bank codes of the world's most successful people. And the bank code that you have, that we have, is one of the most successful influential bank codes there is in business, in sales. Because your action, like you're, you're going to punch the pedal to the metal. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to carve your own path. You're an entrepreneur. And the nurturing piece of you is doing it for the love of people. Right. Because you genuinely care and people can feel that authenticity from you, they will open up doors of opportunity for you that allow you to, to punch through it uh, and reach levels that maybe you've never gone before because you're doing it with your heart leading you. And that's, that's where I really resonate with your concept of love is just damn good business Bank is my way of showing love by understanding who you are and communicating to you based on that. So let me, let me test this, this idea with you because it, it seems to me that in any methodology, if the motivation behind it is off, uh, it, it affects the outcome. And what I, what I mean by that is you've said several times that 
the foundation of this of this bank method is love. That if I love you, if I care about you, human being to human being, I'm going to take the time to understand what makes you tick, and I'm going to do my best to communicate you with you in a way that's going to make you feel most comfortable because that's what you do for somebody that you love. And my motivation, it seems to me, can also be otherwise because you've, you've given evidence that if I, can, if I can crack this code, I'm going to make more sales. So what if my motivation is really nothing more than just trying to close the deal? And I don't really care about you. I'm just learning how to appear that I do. Yeah. So there's, there's two words that I'm going to point out, and that's emotional intelligence, right? When I created the bank system, I genuinely wanted to close more sales. And it wasn't so that I could screw more clients. It was, it was so that I could close more sales. And in my heart, I believe that the, the product line I was representing was good for my customer, right? I had a level of integrity about myself that, that would not let me sell something that was manipulative or fraudulent or harmful to someone else, right? right. Um, and of course, you have to have a soul and you have to have integrity. Can a bad person use the bank system to manipulate people? Sure. If they don't have integrity and they don't have emotional intelligence, you can try to force speaking the code to manipulate. But people are, are, are much more awake these days. And uh, I don't think you'll make it very far before you find the world turning their back against you and, and destroying your reputation because of it. So to say it another way, people that you're selling to have a pretty good bullshit meter. So they know if you're, they, they can sense if you're coming from an inauthentic place, right. which I would then uh, extrapolate from that, that you're not going to be as successful using this methodology if it's not coming from an authentic place because totally. people can sense it. Right. So we weave emotional intelligence into everything that we're doing um, and emotional intelligence, like Harvard said, emotional intelligence, like if you were to compare people of equal IQ, the person with emotional intelligence is going to win the game of life. They're, they're going to get the promotions. They're going to get the pay increases at a, at a track much faster than the person who's not emotionally intelligent. And Steve, you probably see this in your work with extreme leadership. If the leader is emotionally intelligent and they genuinely care about the other person, even if it's for their own success, but they care, right? They're going to communicate more effectively. They're going to lead more effectively. Yes. And that's going to be their version of love, empathy, emotional intelligence. Let's call it whatever version we want it to have, but they're not a jerk. Right. 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 And, and I think that's, what's important. And business today is totally changing. I can't wait. I want to partner with you and, and go on some of these training gigs that you go on because I want, I want to piggyback what you're doing and show them that, in, in bringing bank to leadership, you can be such a, a more effective leader, more influential, and you can actually optimize people uh, versus some of, the, some of the stuff that I see happening in corporate and the bullying and the politics. That is low emotional intelligence right. and not use of the bank codes and just forcing people to listen to you because I'm your boss. And those are outdated ways of building businesses and running companies. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, your entire <laughs> would I agree? company is built on that. Yes, I think I would agree. And I, and I love that idea. So if anybody's listening to this and said, hey, you know what? Maybe we should bring Farber and Sherry in virtually or otherwise to help us with our leadership from the extreme leadership point of view and then bank as, as a methodology for, for um, applying that. If that, if that rings your bells, uh, let me know. Yeah. For sure. Stream banking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a great idea. I'd, I'd be, I'm, I'm all for it. Let me put it that way. Yeah. So, so there is a, um, an opportunity here, I think for, for all of us to see how in your words, if we can learn to speak, a universal language, we can actually have a huge difference. I mean, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll be better salespeople and more effective in whatever transactions we're trying to take care of, 
but we also have, have an opportunity to change the nature of things for the better. And in my intro to you, I said, this is one of the things that, that really, uh, I think, connected us is it's this language. And I want to read it again. This is from your bio. Uh, your mission is to crack the code of every human being on the planet and ultimately make our world a better place by creating one world, one language. So let's, let's bring this conversation in for a landing on that note. So what do you think the opportunity is for, for that, for creating one world, one language? What, what can we accomplish together in whatever realm we operate in, whether it's sales or otherwise? Yeah. Well, I love the question. That, that's our big mission. Our, our mission statement is simple, to connect and empower humanity. And I'll use this example, speaking of language, uh, I got a chance to go to Egypt this last fall. And in going to Egypt, I went to the Egyptian museum and there was the Rosetta Stone. And as I stood looking at the Rosetta Stone, you know, the Rosetta Stone has three languages on there. Like they have Egyptian, they have Greek, and they have uh, hieroglyphics. And what was powerful about the idea behind the Rosetta Stone was that they were three completely different languages that one civilization did not understand anything about the other previous civilizations because the writings were so different, except that the Rosetta Stone took three totally different language patterns and put them in one place, etched in stone, the Rosetta Stone. And they were able to, it gives me goosebumps all over, they were able to decipher what that language pattern was and it unlocked literally the key to that entire civilization. Goosebumps everywhere. So when the mayor gives you the key to the city, what bank for us does is it gives you the key to humanity because you are able to literally unlock the code that human beings are designed in and everyone has a different code. And if you understood that and knew how to communicate and you did it, you know, all the time, like it became part of your operating system, you, you would communicate so much more effectively, conflict would reduce, wars would reduce, divorce would reduce, like we have school systems using it for anti-bullying, we have churches using it for marriage ministries, I mean, we've had people say that the bank system has prevented suicide, like claims that I could never possibly, you know, market this thing around that are happening, of people saying this saved my marriage, this made me a parent. I mean, because at the end of the day, when you speak to someone, and I, I love Jason, Jason works for our company, he's friends with Craig, your friend. Um, and Jason said, you know, what bank is for me, my interpretation of bank is that human beings are wired a certain way. And when you speak their bank code, you're speaking to them in the way that they were designed to be spoken to. Mm. And as I listen to that, I'm like, that's deep. And that's exactly what bank does. It allows the person to communicate, not based on who you are, or how you want to be communicated with, but how the other person wants to be communicated with. And the goal would be not just to make it one sided. I don't want to just speak your code, Steve, and then you speak back to me, not in my code. But if I, if we can train enough people on what this code is and how it works, cracking the code and teaching the code, you know, we, we have a four part, Thing where we say crack the code, speak the code, live the code, and take it to the bank. Then all of a sudden we'd have a world where we could communicate far more effectively. I had a guy come up to me and say, I think this is going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And I, I mean, this was five years ago and I was like, what? Like Nobel Peace Prize and bank were never two thoughts that crossed my mind together. And I said, why would you say that? And he said, Sherry, I come from Israel, a country torn in war. The only reason that countries go to war together is because country leaders do not communicate effectively with other country leaders, and that escalates to war. And your program de-escalates by allowing people to communicate effectively, right? And so that's why I'm really honored to collaborate with you, Steve, because you are, you are, you're teaching bank. You just don't know that you're teaching bank, but your outcome of trying to have love be the basis of damn good business is by bringing in essences of, of these pieces of the equation 
to communicate more effectively, to have empathy, to have emotional intelligence. And if you do that, then the outcome would be better results in business, uh, a, a, a more optimized sales force, a more optimized workforce. You're going to reduce people calling in sick. You're going to improve the hiring cycles. Like all of these things are going to be the outcome of practicing these philosophies. Wow. What a, what a beautiful uh, closing thought. I just uh, share one other perspective. It just occurred to me as you were laying out that vision that this all started with you wanting to get more yeses in sales and look at the implications of, of what your insight has, has, has yielded. I mean, it's, it's really, it's incredible. And, you know, I hope you're, uh, uh, I know you're a humble person. I hope you're also very proud of the, of the great, um, uh, simple, elegant, method that you're helping people um, connect with. And they'll get results in, in whatever arena they apply it, whether it's sales or leadership or, or marriage or, or community, where, wherever it is. Uh, and these, these, univer these universal models that are simple at their core, and, you know, and in that way, it reminds me very much of, of LEAP, of love, energy, audacity, and proof, uh, because it's, simple and universal and therefore has thousands of applications. Uh, so I'm, I'm honored that we made this connection. So Sherry, just before we sign off, what, uh, how do people stay in touch with you? Uh, do you have any resources for us that we can avail ourselves of? Yeah, we, we actually have a gift for everyone. If you want to crack your code like Steve and I did using the cards, we have a digital version of it. You can just go to our website and Steve, you can put that link in there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll give you a link, but Codebreaker Tech is our website, codebreakertech.com. And on there, just choose the option to crack your code and uh, we'll give you a special link that you can do it totally for free. And that will give you a report. Once you sort these four cards in order and, and we've translated them into 35 different languages. So uh, wherever your followers are around the world, you should be able to crack your code. And you'll get a bank code report complimentary from us, $99 value that tells you all about you and not just, not just that piece of it, which is going to be pretty cool, insightful. And you're going to say, how did they know that in less than 90 seconds? Um, but on top of that, we're going to teach you how do you engage in relationships with other people differently? Like it might be your spouse, your children, your boss, your coworker, your, your customer. Uh, we're going to give you some great little tips to help you optimize that. And then uh, for those of you that want to read the book, Why They Buy, right on our website, just click on the link. You can order a copy. You can add a set of these cards to your order. And that's a great way to start getting familiar with the methodology, read the book. And then, of course, we have the tools, the training, the technology for those of you that say, hey, I, I love it. I want more. Fantastic. Wow. I'm so glad I asked. I can't wait to run over there and sign up for that myself. Although I have to admit, I've got a lot of that already in hand. I've got the cards, I've got the book, but I'm, now I want the report. <laughs> Fantastic. I want to thank you for, for taking the time. I know you're a, you're a new mommy and you just brought the little one home. And even in that exciting personal context, you carved out some time to spend with us. Uh, it means a lot to me, Sherry. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Steve. It's an honor. I love you. I love you. I love your book. I love your work. So thank you. Well, I love you too. Ha! And, on and that that's note, just damn good business. <laughs> just damn good business. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Thank you for listening to another episode of Love is Just Damn Good Business with Steve Farber. Join us again next time because when customer and employee satisfaction just isn't enough anymore, we are here to back you up with specific ideas to operationalize love to make an enormous difference in your business, personal life, and the world around you. Visit our website at stevefarber.com to leave a review. And don't forget to share the love with your colleagues and friends because after all, it's just damn good business.